One of the many benefits of using a potential meter circuit is that we can adjust the sensitivity so that it gives us better precision, meaning we can use a potential meter to adjust the sensitivity of the device. All right, let's look at this example. Here we have a power supply of 2.000 volt. Wow, there's so many significant figure and also very precise. Um, the potential meter wire PQ. So always remember that when it comes to a potential meter, the wire is your main character. Okay, it's the you know it's the main character of your circuit. And we know that this wire is hundred cm, five point zero zero. Okay, the power supply has an EMF of two point zero 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 volt, and the solar cell has an EMF of 5 millivolt. So 5.00 millivolts. Okay. Which resistance R must be used so that the governometer reading reads 0 when PS is 40 cm? So again, we are using the null method. Okay, so when the potential meter works because you're using the null method. Okay. So when we are looking at the null method, the spelling wrong, okay? Meaning there's no current flowing through the governometer. So what do we know when that happens? We know that the potential drop from P to S must be the same as the potential drop from across the solar cell. Okay, so we have done this several times in the theory uh, video, in the few examples that is uh, together in this playlist. The idea here is for the governometer to have no current, the potential drop from P to S must be the same as the potential drop across the solar cell. So I'll put this as the EMF of the solar cell. Okay, and the reason why there's a potential drop across the solar cell is because you are fighting. The solar cell is fighting the two volts. Okay, so there will be a drop. So this VPS, I don't know what this is, but I do know the EMF is 5.00 millivolt. Okay, and this uh, VPS here, I don't know what it is. But hey, you know V is equal to IR? So since there's no current flowing through the governor meter, there's also no current flowing through here because the potential difference is the same. Here is 2 volt, here is also, here is 2 volt, here is also 2 volt. So no, no, no potential difference. So the only pathway for the current to flow is out of the power supply, flow through the wire, flow through this resistor R. This is your I. So I can say VPS is the current I multiplied by the resistance of PS. Okay, so let us find I first. We're going to use V equal to IR for the upper circuit, for the upper loop where the current is flowing. So the loop where the current is flowing is this one or this green color loop. Okay, so I'm going to use V equal to IR for this loop. What is the provider of energy? The 2 volt power supply. I'm looking for current. What's the total resistance? We are talking about the entire wire because the current flows through the entire wire. That will be 5 ohm. So 5.00 plus the resistance R. Okay, I mean, I don't know what R is, but I also don't know what I is. But you see, I can substitute. So I is equal to 2 over 5 plus R. I'm going to do away with the decimal point first. I'll add it in later if it's needed. Okay, so I is equal to 2 over 5 plus R. And in this case, I can now substitute the value of I here. 2 over 5 plus R. In fact, we are looking for R, so we can keep it there. Then you think to yourself, what about PS, our teacher? How do I find the resistance of PS? Well, I know the resistance of the whole wire PQ, right? The wire PQ is 100 cm long, 5 ohm. So if 100 cm is 5 ohm, 40 cm will be ratio is your best friend. So I will take 40 over 100 times the total resistance 5. Okay, use ratio. This is RPS. Okay, because this this one here, 500 is RPQ. And the length PQ is 100. Alright, so this one will be 5 milli. 
five times 10 to the power negative three. I'm going to um, calculate the resistance of PS first. That would give me two. This is two ohm. Okay, you can use the ratio as well. And then here would be two over five plus R. So this will be five times 10 to the power of negative three. So I'll cross multiply. Four here is equal to five times five, 25 times 10 to the power of negative three plus five times 10 to the power of negative three R. Okay, five times 10 to the power of negative three R. All right, multiply these two to get this one. And then this five minus R, I bring over here. Okay, to cross multiply. So 5 times 5 is 25. And R times 5 is this one. Okay. Yeah. Right. So what's next? I guess now is to just uh, simplify. So I'm going to bring the 4 over to minus. 4 minus 25 times 10 to the power negative 3. So this will give me 3.975. I'm going to keep all the SF, okay? because they gave me many SF in the raw data. So 3.975 is equal to 5 times 10 to the power of negative 3 R. So hence, I can find R now. R will be equivalent to 3.975 multiplied, uh, divided by 5 milli. Okay, 3.975 divided by 5 milli, that will give me 7950. So the answer is C. Okay. So before we move on from this question, there are a few things I want to point out here. Number one, this resistance is very large. Oh, this R is 795 ohm. But the wire is only 5 ohm. Okay. This means, right, the potential difference across the entire wire is very small. Okay. So the, the let's make a few notes here, see what we can learn. Number one, the potential difference across the wire is small, okay, less or small because due to large R. So when the potential is small, number two, the potential difference per unit length is greater. So for example, instead of having two volts spread out over one meter, now I have much less, less than two volts. Of course, I guess if you want to, you can calculate. You can always take, um, let's say I want to find the potential difference PD, PD across PQ can always use the ratio method by taking 5 over 795 plus 5 multiply by 2 because 2 is being shared between 795 and the wire. So if I do this, what I'll get is 0, <clears throat> 0 0.01254 which is also equivalent to 12.5 millivolt. I am measuring a 5 millivolt battery. So 12.5 is enough. Okay. So from here, right, you can tell instead of having 2 volt per meter. So previously it was 2 volt per meter. This is without R. Okay, I'll write here. Without R, it is 2 volt per meter. With R, it is now 0 0.0125 volt per meter which means when i add this external resistor i am adjusting the sensitivity more sensitive or basically in uh, a level words it is more precise measurement okay more precise measurement so the whole nutshell here is we are still going back to the basic idea. What 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 is the basic idea you ask? Well, the basic idea is if you want to use the null method, the governor meter reading is zero. 
And when the governor meter reading is zero, the drop across PS is equal to the EMF of the solar cell. Okay? So this is step one in problem solving. Drop across the EMF is uh, EMF of solar cell. I mean, drop across PS is EMF of solar cell. But in order to find the potential drop across PS, I will use IR. I here, I will write an expression, or basically I use Kirchhoff's second law for this green color loop, because this is the only loop where the current will flow, since the bottom part is closed. Okay, so this is step two. I find the, an expression for I. And since R is inside the expression for I, I'm very happy to put it inside, because I can find R. What do I do with the resistance from P to S? This is a matter of simple ratio. 100 cm is 5 ohm. So 40 cm will be 2 ohms. Okay, so I'll just put the equation and I found R. And the reason why we have such a large potential difference, uh, such a large difference between resistance is because we want to make the wire, the potential per unit length of the wire very, very small. So we get more precise reading. And why do we need such precision? Because the solar cell is only 5 millivolt, it's 0 0.005, very, very little, okay? So in this case, if let's say I double check and find the potential difference across PQ, since PQ is sharing the potential with R, I will take 5 over 795R plus 5, which is the resistance of PQ times 2. They are sharing the 2 volt. And I'll get 12.5 millivolt or 0 0.0125. This increases the precision. Without R, the potential difference per unit length is 2 volt per meter. With R, the potential difference per unit length is 0 0.0125. So the entire 1 meter, you can spread out 0 0.0125. More precise. So in a nutshell, the potential difference across the wire is small due to the large R. Okay, and because of this, the potential difference per unit length of the wire decreases. So the benefit of using a potential meter, and actually in a lot of your multimeters, there is a potential meter inside. Whenever you go clack, 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 you turn, you could be changing the value of R. The larger the R, the more sensitive your equipment, the more precise your measurement is, the more decimal point you have. Okay, so that would be the closing thought. The larger R. This R must be placed in series with wire. Larger R. Greater precision in measurement. Okay. All right, that's it for this question. Uh, potential meters idea are a bit complex, but they are not many, they're not a very popular past year question. So generally, we don't really expect them too much in paper too. But if it's something that you are weak in, please try the objective questions. All right, and I'll see you in the next example where we try out another potential meter full of potentials. Bye-bye.